In this video, we send my $10,000 RC car to the moon. This is the world's biggest RC car. And I fitted the biggest and most powerful engine that I could find. Trouble is with all that power, it melted the transmission. Look, it actually melted the metal. So we're going to take it apart, see what happened and try and fix it. Also with all that power, we also blew out the front differential. So we've got to fix that too. And look at this guys, this is a normal size RC car. This is the Raminator. Also, we've got four more shock absorbers to stick on there to give it eight, just like on a real monster truck. Yep, I built a real monster truck. There's plenty of videos of that on this channel. Want to make more cash so you can buy more toys, quit your job, or maybe buy your dream house? Then click on the link in the description and I'll show you how many of my students make thousands of dollars every single month by selling simple items like this and this on eBay. Right, let's get it stripped apart and see what caused that molten metal. Look at that beautiful Taylor RC engine and just the whole truck in general. Get that cover off of that transmission and see what's going on. Oh no, the Loctite is too tight, but no big deal, we've got some heat. Uh, we can't get to these top bolts very easily, they're all at funny angles, probably going to be easier just to remove the whole transmission. It does spin freely, when we last used it, it all seized up, and didn't want to turn at all, but now it does actually want to turn. Oh my god, look in here, that's supposed to be grease, and all it is is full of metal filings. Oh dear, what a, oh, where's the, oh! The bearing, oh no. Look, that is the bearing. It's completely disintegrated. We've got some brand new bearings here. So this is what a bearing should look like. And that is what it looks like on the Raminator now. Hopefully there's no balls in there, otherwise it would have caused some serious havoc. I'm hoping all the balls ejected themselves out of that hole there on the side of the casing. So I'm guessing what happened is the bearing seized up. It was spinning around inside the aluminium casing and just superheated it and melted it. So we have to strip the whole thing down, clean it all up, regrease it, put it back together with new bearings, and then we should be good. So here we've got a little bit of brake cleaner. Let's try and decrease it all a little bit in there. So I think this gear here actually took the worst of it. So there we go, got it all stripped down, all cleaned up, ready for reassembly. The only damage actually was the bearing that goes in there. So that's what failed, that was spinning around in there, and that's what superheated it all up and melted that casing. Then these two gears here, they probably are reusable if you spent some time filing them, but I've got some spare ones. So next we've got to try and assemble it all again. Luckily, we have instructions that show us where all the components go. Now in the casing, we have this old bearing and there's no way of tapping it out. Sometimes you can get the shaft in there like that and wiggle it and wiggle it and wiggle it and try and slowly work it out, but it doesn't want to come out. You can't get anything underneath it to lever it out neither. But what we used to do on the real cars is you put a bit of tissue or something in the hole and then you can put the shaft in and hit it and the pressure from all the stuff building in there should make it hopefully come out. But I think it's gonna work better with a silicon earplug. Let's try that. A bit of silicon earplug in the hole and shaft on top like that, then hit it. And it has actually moved. So then a bit more in there and keep doing it till it's out. Boom. Now we just gotta get all this mess out of here. Yeah, easy. Look, and the bearing, unharmed, but we're gonna change it anyway. So here we've got a new casing, and here we've got some new bearings. I'm gonna try and get the covers off so we can get some extra grease in there to hopefully make them last longer. So I've got some marine grease here in a syringe, and I was gonna squeeze a bit more of that in there. Hopefully that's gonna make these bearings last a little bit longer. Oh, I can hear it in the comments. Kev, you're not supposed to hit bearings. Don't worry, it's just a toy. I'm not in it. So this here is what activates the reverse gear. And you've got this little fork here that sits in between and moves that left and right. There we go, one rebuilt transmission. If you have a look in here, look, when we pull this, what the servo pulls, you can see that shifting from forward into reverse gear, look.
So next, let's split open the front axle housing and see what's happened to the differential. We've lost drive completely. It's just rear wheel drive now. Look, that's spinning round and that isn't. Ah, so there we go, that's what broken. That's like a common thing to go wrong on these raminators. Here, I've got some prototype ones made out of a stronger steel. So let's chuck them in and see if that solves the issue. So here we have the prototype heavy duty version. It looks exactly the same, but it's the material that should make it stronger. And while we got it apart, we may as well replace the stock one on this side too. Right, ready, ready, ready. So I want this diff to be pretty locked. It's better for like doing monster truck tricks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in some silicon earplugs. What that does is almost locks it, but not fully locks it. We're just gonna go ahead and cram as much in there as we possibly can. And then get the lid back on. Next, we have the twin shock conversion. So I've taken off a spring because I don't really want the spring rate to be any harder. But having two shocks on there shares to load over the two shock shafts and I want to send this thing to the moon. So what we can do, we can put half to eight shock hole into both shocks. So we should get roughly the same damping, but more durability. And it also looks more realistic. Trouble is though, now that we've taken the seat cup off on the spring, is when we push that shaft all the way in, there's still a little bit of shaft showing. Trouble is with that, the piston bottoms out in the top of the shock and then the shaft can bend. But if we come over here and have a look at the real monster truck, we got these bump stops. So let's see what we can conjure up. So here I have a grommet set and this one here fits perfectly over the shaft. So I'm gonna put on a washer, grommet, another washer, rod end back on. It's a bit naughty really holding that shock shaft in the vise, but I've got aluminium jaws. This is steel, aluminium being softer than steel, it should not scratch it. Beautiful. So now look, it looks exactly the same. That's the real one. So I've done a little bit of research and I cannot find any softer shock oil than 100 CST. This is the softest. So what I'm gonna do is just get a three and a half millimeter drill bit and drill out the pistons. Also, these shocks are leaking. So I'm gonna take it apart and have a look to see what's going on in there. So this is the O-ring that's in there now. And over here, I have an O-ring set. And I've had a little play about, and the one that fits best is this one here. Now, I know nothing about O-rings, but it does say on here, R07. So maybe you can find some of the same. It might not even work. So I'm gonna put that in there like that, and it's a bit of a tighter squeeze. Then this back on top. And I'm gonna leave it loose for now and install the shaft, which is a much tighter fit. And then with that in there, I'm gonna crank it up. And it's tighter, but it still moves. So time's gonna tell if that's gonna stop the leaking. So these are brand new shocks. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the old oil back in and I'm gonna put the lid on when I move the shock up and down because I've done it a minute ago and it shot all the oil out the top and went absolutely everywhere. Bit of a top upage and lid back on. No idea if this is how you're supposed to do it, but eh, not in there, am I? What a mess. But that's one done. So now let's do the rest of them. Boom! Next, we need a shock mounting kit. So next, I've got these heavy duty steering arms. So the stock ones have a habit of bending and also when there's a bush in there, it kind of gets wobbly after a while. So these ones here, ball raced and a lot beefier. There we go, all mounted on there. And now look, it's a lot less sloppy. Next, we've got to fit the rear ones. Got it all on there now, so next, get the wheels on, body back on, and then we can take it out for a week. Here we are on location. Max's first time seeing a Ramonator. What do you reckon? That's huge.
Here we are on the location on the skate park. This thing is stupidly loud. Probably someone's going to come of authority and kick us off. So we've probably got about five minutes. Right, let's go. So first of all, Max is going to have a little go with the X-Max. Oh my God. Once we start this thing up, police are probably going to come. I reckon these two RCs are the two best RC cars in the world. Is that the 1100kb in there? Oh my God, Jesus. <laughs> what? We're going to do that with a Raminator in a little while. You watch. Raminator's going to go to the moon. Still going? <laughs> oh, that was a nasty landing. So between the X-Max and the Raminator, I can't make my mind up which one's better. The Raminator's more fun, but it's a, you know when it breaks, you've got to carry it a lot. It's heavy, zero practicality, but for fun of driving, Raminator is number one. You're going to see in a minute. X-Max, still fun driving, but it's a little bit more user-friendly. So they're both my top pick. The old 1100 kV Hobby Wing. Let's have a look at all that energy in there. Killed it? I did the wheels. Oh no. Ding again. But anyway, he's also got his UDR here look. And this one, oh, what wheels are these? Uh, these are Vitavon wheels. He's got Vitavon wheels. You guys in the comments have been giving me grief because I call it, hang on, what is it? Vitavon or Vitavon? Vitavon. Vitavon. What, what do I call it? Vitavon, I think. Vitavon. Vitavon. I thought I always called it Vitavon. Oh, check this out. It's all vitavon up on the arms. Man, that is a nice UDR. Hot racing, rear suspension, complete alloy differential housing. What's going on with this droppy? He's getting it now. <laughs> Oh no, Matt just set himself a challenge. What's the challenge? You're trying to land it on that little thing there. Trouble is, if he goes up there and gets stuck, you're never getting it back. Go oh, it's got the height. Oh no, get out, look. Oh look, he's killed three arms on it already. Oh, 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 oh that's so close. Oh, 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 no! That didn't sound good. Is it like on fire? It sounded like it went Oh, a pinning gear. Oh, that would do it. Oh, poor X Max. He's done all of them. One, two, three, four. Oh, what? He's... What? How? Guys, I've killed like the odd arm, but four on one bash. It's just how. Game over. Game over. But anyway, I'm trying to get Max to start a YouTube channel. What do you guys reckon? Comment down below. So next, the UDR is going to get a quick blast and then the Raminator. <laughs> Raminator time. Later, don't die. Yeah. 
take it? Yeah. It took it. It didn't take it. That was high. Oh, no, it didn't take it. Oh, something's gone. Oh, no. Something broke. We've got no drive. We've completely lost drive. You're a motorbike expert, what do you reckon? Uh, not too sure. That went to the moon. <laughs> well, so the landing was good? Yeah, perfect. I never saw the landing on my end. It looks like the suspension's working really good on this now. Oh, it's just lost drive. We're gonna investigate and then put you back on. All right, so a few moments later, I think the shaft inside the gearbox is broken. Not sure. Let's um, start it again. Max reckons it could be in neutral. It could be in neutral. Let's see. <laughs> Yep, probably shaft inside the transmission. So back to the shop, fix it, and out again in another video. But man, this thing lands good. We're gonna take it to the moon. Next Raminator video.